So Carl recently won a tailor-made stealth cardboard experience day. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I was able to add 35 yards to his tee shots using one simple swing change. And at the end of the video, you're gonna see how Dan was able to use the new stealth driver to really straighten out Carl's tee shots. Uh, okay, Carl, so you've got to see some drives there. You've just had your fitting, which we'll, we'll talk about in a moment, but um, we've taken some, some swings, some data, and we've kind of had a look at it. So what Dan's done with the driver, he's given you a driver which I know is going to help with some of the directional elements. Um, and already we can see here, because you've been hitting our driver, we've got some much better um, control of the club face and the club path, which is great. But you expressed a little bit of... Um, a need for a little bit more distance, should we call it? Absolutely. Um, so we're going to see if we can we can do that with you today. So this is where we're going to put a little bit of our focus. Okay, for the shots that you've hit, you're averaging 106 mile an hour ball speed. So we want to see what we can get that to. And at the moment, that's giving you a carry distance of about a 153. So we we'll see if we can increase those. Now, when we play this, there's very little move into what you do with your upper body. Okay. You stay in what we call forward bend. I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. So you stay in your forward bend, which is this angle here, and the shoulders don't turn. So whilst this swing to you might look a little short, it's basically as far as your arms can go. They can't go any further unless you really started to sort of collapse that arm. So in terms of what we're trying to do, creating speed is time. One of the things you need is time. If we can get the hands to travel further and give you more time, I don't think you'll really have to try and hit it harder. I just think if we can give you a longer backswing with the hands traveling a little further, I think naturally we're going to see that there's more speed there without you really trying to stand up there and hit it. The kind of holy grail, if you like, is to be able to hit the ball further, but almost explain that, well, I'm not, I'm not trying to yeah. swing fast. I'm just I'm being given a swing which is more conducive to speed. So we're really going to start looking at your, what your shoulders do. Okay, so when you set up, you start and you tilt over. Okay, so if you looked at where my chest pointed, that would point straight out, but as we wrote as we tip over I should say that points down towards the ground what you did in your backswing is as you swung the club back you kept your chest pointing down at the ground okay which means that this movement that we've got here which we call forward bend you were keeping it okay now if we look at what the best players do or the longest hitters if you like that chest points down but when they get to the top of their swing It's not, it's pointing sort of horizontal, if not a little bit more above that. What that does, it enables me to make a bigger turn, but also keep the head pretty much in line with the golf ball. So if you want to just jump on that mat, and then when you're ready, you're going to take that club and you're going to pop it across your shoulder. So stay in posture and just pop that and hold that with your hands. Perfect. Good. Okay. So just get yourself into a little bit more of your posture. There we go. Good. Okay. So what I want you to try and do, imagine there's an arrow coming out of your chest, kind of where your hands are. Okay, that would point down at the ball. Okay, make me a backswing motion and get your chest to point what you feel is up to the sky over here somewhere. Keep going. There you go. Feel different? Yep. Yeah, okay. So now you've got bigger turn, but your chest feels like it's opened up a little bit more. It's pointing more up towards the kind of sky. Right, don't take your eyes off the ball. Make that rotation. There you go, perfect. Now, because of what you're trying to do in here, you've done the right thing but you wouldn't have been able to do the right thing if it hadn't been supported by the right thing in the legs. You know, if you imagine what you look at what your legs have done, yeah. they've had to do that. Because if I don't move my legs, I'm kind of stifled. So if you can think about what your chest does, your legs are gonna to have to react in a certain way. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now take your setup again. Just make me what you feel is that same movement, but now you've also got the club in your hands. So just the back so you can hold it. Perfect. There you go, good, much better. So now you've lost all that forward bend, chest is pointing more up, shoulders have turned more. Okay, hands have therefore traveled a little further. What's quite, quite interesting is that if I, you hear people say you turn your shoulders, which to an extent is right, but it's actually more, unfortunately, it's more complicated than that. If I took a setup and just turn my shoulders, you end up with what, with what you've got. Yeah. Okay, whereas actually we've got, if we stood up normally, we've got this movement, We've got this movement and we've got this movement. And in, in the backswing and the downswing, you have to use all of them. And it's, it, you know, the, the simplest way to think about it is you keep your head pretty still. But to keep your head still, you actually have to, you know, change 
this and tilt your shoulders and lots of things that are happening so i believe that from setup you were probably limiting what you could do in your shoulders because you were almost trying to turn these and what i actually want you to think about is to almost forget the shoulders think about your chest you can almost think right chest is at the ball but you've got to get your chest to point what you feel is like up here so how do i do that well i go this way and if you do that your arms will travel further three hits these are don't worry about where the ball goes this is you just trying to get used to what it feels like you know to get your head around the movements and all that kind of stuff so don't worry about where the ball goes just go ahead and just try and make a new movement should we finish there <laughs> perfect <laughs> So I wasn't joking in there when I said down to scratch and I mean those are two completely different drives aren't they? Completely different ball flight, completely different trajectories because you've made a completely different movement. I believe certainly for a lot of golfers you've got physically making the move whatever it may be take away back swing but before that you've just got the concept of just what I'm actually trying to do and very often it can just be okay I wasn't thinking of doing that and changing what you how you think about it so for you, you know, shoulder turn, rotation, I'd, I'd scrap those terms and just literally think about where is this pointing at setup? Where do I want it to point? And that will almost sort everything out for you. Okay, same again. Okay, one more and then we're gonna get some more data. Now, I mean, part of this is down to that driver because I mean, that's, how do you find that driver compared to the one you had before? Uh, I was saying to the lads earlier, it's, it's, it's like worlds apart. Is it? It's, yeah. Just, yeah. The first one I hit was just completely different. Yeah. The sound, the feel, yeah. everything. Was Did you get much more distance out of that one? Yeah, it was a good, it was a good 20, 20, 20 yards. Yeah, wow. plus, yeah. So if we can get you a little bit as well, the combination is, is really powerful, yeah. Because yeah. I put you into the HD there, I think, which is the draw buyer. So that's why, because before you had that fitting, I was seeing you hit your old driver, I'd have probably tried to work a little bit on that ball flight. But actually, because they put you in the HD, that sorted the ball flight out, which means that we can actually just go and work on gaining a bit of distance. So, perfect. Hit one more, and then we'll gain, uh, get a little bit of data. Good. good. All right, Carl. We've smashed what we were trying to do, which is which is good. <laughs> so this is where we started. Um, you know, we wanted club speed above 80. We wanted ball speed above 110. Um, and we wanted to see if we could increase the carry distance from 153. Um, safe to say you've done that. So, the, I mean, the first shot you hit when we retract it, I mean, club speed went to 83, great, more speed there. Ball speed went way over 110, up to 120 odd, and then carry on up to 175. I mean, that was just perfect. And we're getting a different ball flight as well. Um, so that was great, but you didn't stop there, you went better. So I mean, that was probably the best drive of it today. Yeah. So. Club speed 84, ball speed again, we wanted 110, way above 110, up to 121, but this time it's carried 188. I mean, that's just night and day from where you started. Um, your club path and your club face are really well controlled, which is why the ball has flown dead straight. That's partly down to Dan doing his magic with the with fitting. So, you know, like I said there, if you, can get, if you can get the driver to work with you, it opens you up to do other things. You know, it's hard to work on everything at once. Yeah. So with your old driver, I probably would have been trying to get rid of that, that, cut, that carve out to the right, but because the driver's doing that for you, we can then go, well, we, our job is just to get a bit more speed. I would, my experience would tell me that a few more practice sessions, you could get more speed, because a lot of it is just a confidence thing. It's kind of doing that movement, hitting it further, going, okay, and then doing it a bit more. And there's obviously a point you don't want to go too far and get kind of John Daly-esque and you will lose a bit of consistency. But where you are here is, is perfect, um, really, really good. And if we look at what the swing looks like now, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but we've got more length in that swing, which is where that speed is, is coming from. Really nicely committed, but it's on the way through. Actually felt different, it's great. different but smooth it's as great. well. It's yeah, I mean, really good. I mean, that was 188 carry. I mean, that's, that's perfect. You know, you're, you're hitting that over 215 yards. You can reach all the par fours. It just makes the game so much easier. I mean, you've worked wonders with Carl. Talk us through what you did. That must have been a slightly easier fitting, wasn't it, when you saw the driver Yeah, he had? obviously he had a, he had a, it wasn't quite persimmon, <laughs> but, it was, but it was getting was there. Was it, what do you reckon, early 2000s or yeah, something? Yeah, 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 20 years old, you know. So I, what I would say it's, Stood the test of time for him. It's got him around the golf course. Yeah, yeah. You know, it had a load of loft on it, 13 degrees. 
was a bit shorter than what would typically be a, a standard driver now uh, and that's probably helped him um, crucially was finding the right head which we moved into the hd model yeah. which is our draw bias product finding the right loft which we did we found the 10.5 was certainly performing um the best but when i say that kind of double whammy fitting there was certainly room there that the technique is going to improve which is in part going to improve more distance again now because we moved into a draw bias product his actual club path and his start and direction changed himself because he's a, a sportsman and he's saying well i don't have to start as far left now yeah yes he was reacted to it so we see start to see better numbers because of that and then for me to put a more modern driver which is certainly more suited um to call he's, he, the, the importance of the, the fit is shown because his improvement's gone not only through the technique but also with the with the specs of the golf club and then i think when he's moved into the lesson with yourself that double whammy is, is kicked on i was picking you know 12 13 yards worth of distance versus his nike product but obviously moving into into the lesson i think you just say it was like 25 30 yards in, in improvement yeah well i mean i, I was watching watching loosen up and i said to him in the lesson that you know, I think it's too much in a lesson to try and straighten a ball flight out and give more distance. Whereas you kind of straightened out the flight with the club you gave yeah. him, which left me just to say, well, okay, let's see if we can get you a little bit more speed. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of perfect combination because yeah. he didn't have to worry about the, the direction because it was just the driver was doing that yeah. for him. So I could just give him a few ideas on how to be a little bit more speed. Yeah. And so and you gave him distance, I gave him distance. and he's Yeah, it's that kind of 360 package, isn't it? Of getting the right club, but... Yeah being taken down a line which is which is the right way in terms of the technique and after we finished he carried on hitting some more and i had still on the track man running just to have a look at the data and the club speed started to pick up as well as he was starting to get yeah, more yeah. confident with it and seeing when he does go for it it's still going a little bit straight yeah two real really really good fittings today perfect two happy customers gotta take him on the golf course now yeah <laughs> thanks dan all right cheers